Hey there, folks. Today, we're doing another episode of Before You Buy, and we are taking a look at, drumroll please, this silly little boy. We are building and have built a runic horus deck that is trying to just turbo light and darkness dragon. Inspiration was brought upon a list I saw, which played Horse and Light and Darkness Dragon. Um, not necessarily going for something that's trying to win some sort of event, but something that you might have fun with. So now for the deck. We have two Fountain, three Tip, three Flash Fire, three Destruction, three Freezing Curses, three Slumber, two Dispelling. Now... Kind of thought maybe I wanted to add one more to make it an even amount, but I think that this amount in my little bit of testing I've done has been enough to where I've consistently seen it and been able to use it to draw it and provide bodies for a tribute summon of Light and Darkness Dragon. Now, for those totally unaware, Tip searches a runic card and vanishes. Flash Fire t destroys a special one monster and vanishes. Off the top of your deck. Off the top of their deck. My bad. Destruction, destroys a spell or trap that they control, banishes top four. Freezing Curses, negates an effect, monster's effect, targeting, banishes top three. Slumber, target a face-up monster on the field, can't be destroyed by a battle card effect, banish top three. And then lastly, we have our de-spelling. If they add a card from deck to hand, they discard one, then they banish the top two. All pretty solid options. I, I wouldn't bump up that. And I like this, I like Slumber at three just because it always is a good way to try and trigger a fountain draw on your turn. Now for the horror stuff, we're playing quite a bit more than normal. Let me just organize this here so it's better to talk about. We have three King Sarcophagus. Bread and butter. Just the bread and butter, baby. Provides protection for our horse guys, allows them to come back, allows us to foolish burial. The whole thing. Love this card. So good. Then we have Walls of the Imperial Tomb. Less good version of King Sark, but it gets one to hand. Um, it's just for consistency, just to make sure we're able to see two bodies to tribute for a Light and Darkness Dragon. Called by. Really don't want to get ashed. <laughs> Plain and simple. If we get drolled, whatever. Um, it's not like we can't draw on their turn anyway. And then three Light and Darkness Dragon. I really want to see it, because this is what I want to do. This is the aim of the deck. Super fun card, in a way fun. Um, but, for those that don't know, it is a mandatory effect negate when an effect is activated. Once per chain, during either player's turn, when a spell, a trap, or a monster effect is activated. It loses 500 attack and defense, and the activation is negated. <laughs> and he looks super cool. Honestly, one of the cooler looking cards I've seen. Um, and then when he's destroyed and sent to the grave, target one monster grave, destroy all cards, you control, special summon that monster. Horse guys, get protected by King Sark. It might pop a runic one, but that's whatever. Um, for the, the horse boys, 3M Seti, gets you to your King Sark, and then his extra effect. M Seti's extra effect, if another card you control leaves the field by an opponent's effect, you can send a card on the field to the grave. I forget about that effect a lot in person, but online it's a little easier to not forget because it kind of tells you. Happy. Super underrated. Um, target two cards out of Banish from your grave. Add both to hand when a um, card you control leaves the field by your opponent's effect. Thaumatuff, draw power, plus he gets super big. He's kind of our out to towers mon- to yeah, to towers monsters if we're going second. Um, he gets to 12, 24, 36, 48, I think it would count the Black Flame Deity, right? Horse Monsters, yeah. So it could possibly get up to 6k, but most likely it's going to be getting up to 48. It's going to be hard to get him on the field with everyone else. Um, and we are playing one horse of Black Flame Deity. I have not seen him yet in my hand. I like the card. Maybe it'll come up in testing here. And then one that name. Go ahead and try to pronounce it. I'm not going to. Um, the least good of all of them. Uh, if a card leaves the field while he's in your monster zone, you activate this. 
Your opponent's monsters cannot target horse monster for attack. Also, your opponent cannot target horse monster on the field with card effects. Kind of works in tandem with the King's Heart because they can't be destroyed by card effects if they don't target them. So, not bad, just not the best. Then we have two Canopic Protector. Trying out this for the first time in a deck in this one. When your opponent activates card or effect once per chain, you can special summon a horse monster from your hand or grave, but for the rest of the turn, you cannot special summon monsters with the same original name by the effect of Canopic Protector. And if it's sent from the hand or field of the grave, you can set it again, but banish it when it leaves the field. For the extra, we got, we got two Hugin to search out our fountain, one Gary, target a quick play, a non quick play, add it back to our hand. I forget why Guru is in here, so I'm going to immediately take him out. This was because we had Super Poly in. And let's just replace it with. Kind of went my another Zeus. No, that's probably not going to come up. Maybe a ding. Let's get a little dingling. A little Tugan dingers, so. Um, One slot near. This one I have to read a bunch. Uh, during your main phase or opponent's battle phase, quick effect target one mon face up monster opponent controls, banish both that monster and this card till the end phase. Just some protection to try and slow down the game. If a card is added from main deck to your opponent's hand, except during damage, you can special summon one runic token in attack position. I've never summoned it, the token that is. You may have a hope harbinger for a spell negate and some attack control. Uh, Prime Photon Dragon. It kind of gets pretty beefy. Um, well, that gets pretty beefy. He is beefy. Plus, really big Zeus. As long as you summon him with Prime Photon Dragon, the number 62. Which is the only reason why he is in here. Just to make this bigger. Then we have one zombie vampire. Um, get to special summon something out. Get to see what they're playing. I like zombie vampire. Ding. Non-targeting send. I don't think of him as a time card. I more so think of him as <laughs> draw one and deal eight. Um, we're playing online, so how often is time going to come up? Never. We have Infection Buzz King. I want to try out this card. So, during your standby, you can attach one card from your opponent's grave to this card's material. If you use in conjunction with Zombie Vampire, then we will be getting something. Uh, if it's XC summoned, you can let your opponent's extra send one card from it to the grave. You can detach one material from this card, target a face up card your opponent controls, destroy it. Then if you destroy a face-up monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to half the attack it had on field. So, extra deck rip. Extra deck rip. Pretty nice. Again, see what they're playing. Um, not that it matters too much. Without Light and Darkness Dragon, like I said, his effect to negate is mandatory. Don't have much of a say in it. To Zeus. He is Zeus. I think we all probably know what Zeus does, but in case you don't, quick effect detach to not once per chain. Send all cards on the field except himself to the grave. We love him. All right, let's jump into one casual game first before we take it on the ranked. Okay, we will go first. And we have mainly just horse cards. Let's see what happens. Sark. Sark effect. It resolves. How about some more Sark? So... We are playing, <laughs> as you see in the stream, a Horus, <laughs> Light and Darkness Dragon, Runic deck. Right now we're just plopping down some bodies. And seeing what they do with it. Um... Let's do this and try and draw. Yeah. Come on, give us a card. And they have Imperm. We love to get Imperm. Let's do that just so we can get these guys off him. Um... 
get this going. So they'd be playing with some water. I will respond to that. Let's bring back our happy boy. They could synchro summon. But will they? They will. A Chishing. I will respond to that. Oh, you want to activate another effect? I will respond to that. We respond to all of that. Now where do they go with this? They're probably reading Kingsark. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs> you see that, Cody? That's how you win a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! You make your opponent not read. And he left the match! So this truly shows off the power of the Horus. They just don't read King Sark. That's how I won locals as well. Dog. Dog. Talk about bricks. I think the temperature here is like high 40s. It's nice. It's pretty nice out. It actually is. <laughs> I mean, we should put... What I think I'm going to do before I end anything is take out probably Horus, the Black Flame Deity, with a trade-in. And maybe one Light and Darkness Dragon with a trade-in. Yeah, I think that I might do that. Because Horus is like just a, the deadest hand of all of all time, along with Light and Darkness Dragon. Those are both just absolutely mega dead. Ah, a contact fuse, but by vanishing. Does it negate something? Can't be destroyed! Okay. And what does this one do? Okay. No fast effects, sir. Still no. Cody, before we start, <clears throat> are we winning this game? Before I activate anything, are we winning it? I'm gonna say yes. I have faith. No? Okay, let's see. Roll. So they're unaffected or just they can't be destroyed? Cannot be destroyed. So we can contest that. Let's start with some fountain. The only problem is not being able to battle. One monster can destroy it. If you're controlling a Roma monster, your life points at least 3,000. Destroy all face on Okay. Let's... Do nothing yet. We do nothing yet. Now.
Let's lead with King Sark and make them try to pop it so we can negate it and get some advantage off of that. Bring back him Sebi. Anything. <laughs> We're not losing this. I refuse. Who's the Black Flame Dieter? Goodbye. And we're cooking. And we're straight cooking. What you gotta cook? The best level monster. What is it? It's just a goldfish. It's not a goldfish. It's a goldfish. I'm good right now. And I'm good. I'm good right now. You can go now. And now, we tribute summon for Light and Darkness Dragon. We did it. <laughs> we pulled them all. We're now face skipping from Runix, and now we proceed to negate them all. <laughs> We're showing off the power of our light and darkness dragon. Cody, you said we we're gonna lose, but I don't know, man. Kinda looking pretty nice. Looking like we might have just outsauced him. He's reading our light and darkness dragon in all of its glory and saying to himself. I should just concede. And I'm saying, yeah, you probably should, big dog. Go ahead. Try to activate that effect. See what happens. He's gonna get negated. They said we couldn't pull it off. They said we couldn't summon Light and Darkness Dragon. Yet here we are. Sure. They said it couldn't be done. They said it couldn't be done. Yeah, he might get contested by this, but so what? So what? We'll just draw cards. And then we will special summon. Does he have an effect when he is summoned? Let's bring back Happy. We add. Get a fountain. They think. And think and think. How long is this going to take? Let's grab Gary.
Come on, give us something good. Eh. Not the best. But we don't hate it necessarily. <clears throat> Skip over our battle and end. Of all things, I'm sure that we weren't expecting to see this type of matchup. Other things we've learned, Light and Darkness Dragon actually gets added pretty easily. we have to bring back a happy, right? Yeah. Let's grab, or at least try to grab back this. And anything banished that we like? No. Yeah, let's do that. It doesn't feel like we have the upper hand, though, for sure. Let's grab our mutt. One thing I will say so far from playing this deck, if you want to play long games of Yu-Gi-Oh, this is the deck for you, for sure. Go, Horus. Wipe the field. <laughs> it just seems like a like a continuous cycle. Kind of like our Horus monsters. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Welcome back. That was quite rude. A duster would be super crazy. No. Okay. Let's try and make them do something here to this. Got one draw though. Did I miss some sort of timing here? I feel like I didn't. I feel like they're lying to us. Alright, 
Can we make anything here? Not really. That doesn't do much. I guess let's see what Mr. Zombie Vampire can get done for us. He can get done absolutely nothing. Well, that'll be it for us for here. Let's surrender. Our revolution is over, Mr. Lebowski. Condolences! The bomb's lost! All right, we're back with our amalgamation. Let's give it some scoring. So, fun score, I'm gonna give it like a six. It's cool to do light and darkness dragon, and it's cool to summon some big guys, but past that, it doesn't do too much. Uh, a good slash strength slash meta relevancy score, I'm gonna give it a big fat two. It could definitely steal a game if it summons Light and Darkness Dragon and your opponent just doesn't have anything. However, it's going to be unlikely. Price score. So for a deck to take to locals to have fun with, you'd want something cheap. This isn't that cheap for the fun price point. So I'm going to rate it probably a 2 for price. I think the horror stuff still is good to pick up just for the future, but for what we're trying to do here, total price, not worth it. But we do have one last score in category. It's going to be the silly score. I'm going to give it a 10 for our silly score because it is 10 sillies out of 10. Let's bring in Hannah for her judgment. Hannah! Hello, everyone. So I, I can't see the price anymore. Oh, there it is. I got a squint. Okay. So I'm gonna assume that, that the $300 is because if you had to buy every single one of the cards. So I think the price range is pretty good. Um, but if you have to buy it all, probably don't. Just don't. Unless you can get the cards for free. Because $347, you can get so much stuff for that. So, so yeah. We're all gonna give price a six out of ten. Um, I have no idea if this deck is fun or not, and I don't remember what Derek just said to me. So let's see. Um, I see that there's um only like four or five monsters in the whole deck. So, I personally think it would be a lot of fun because I like spells and traps. Yep. So, fun rating, let's give it a 5 out of 10. And, yeah. So, that's just what we're going to go with. Thank you for watching Derek's stream. We appreciate you.